good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel so uh, we've got the John Deere 4640 and we've got the 30 foot Henniker air seater on it what we're gonna do this afternoon is uh, we're gonna get it ready for uh, spring planting of soybeans so uh, what I want to do is I've got the air seater unfolded already this is kind of our test area back here where we bring you know the disc and the soil finisher back here and make sure everything's good make sure everything functions so I'm gonna take the air seeder now and I'm gonna go through a trial run with no seed just to make sure the seed uh, seed drive works um, see if I have any locked up disc openers or closing wheels or seed firmers that need fixed and we'll make sure that we don't have any blocked seed tubes or anything like that so uh, we know the markers are gonna work we don't even have to mess with them so I'm not even gonna get out and unpin them so uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to start my blower for my seed. Look back and on my gauge, it reads about 13. Uh, so we've got plenty of air pressure there. So that's good, that's running. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna turn our seed switch on that should lock the clutch on the uh, planter drive to see if we have seed. I'm gonna move forward here a little bit. Yep, seed meters are turning, so we're good there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drop the planter. A little hard to do it one-handed, or wrong hand using a lever. So now we're just going to take off. Let's look on this side. Oh, I see one locked up. See a couple locked up throughout the planter. Go ahead and raise it. Monitor's working, of course there's no seat in there, so the camera's working, we're all good. Let's get out. We're going to do a walk around. See what we got to fix. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through and visually inspect and turn stuff. Closing wheel spins. Disc opener spins. Gauge wheel's all right. Seat firmer's good. That one's good. There's a broken one, so I have to replace that spring. Bearings are all good there though. That one's stiff, probably gonna replace that bearing. Those are good. That one's junk, gonna have to be replaced. So you kinda get the idea. I'm gonna go through the rest of these and check them. Okay, so that one's bent. I need to fix it, but it's fine. This happens because uh, when you back up along like a road ditch or along a road or something, that'll bury in the ground once in a while and you'll bend them. Happens quite often, especially if you can't raise the three-point hitch very high, which this tractor's got shorter rear tires, so the three-point don't raise that high. On the 4955, I can raise it pretty high because it's got taller tires. So no big deal, I can fix that rather quickly. So what we're gonna check for now is blockage in the seat tubes. So I'll kind of show you, I'll get, a, I'll get a handful of sand and you can see how it blows the sand out of my hand. So that is a good open tube. See that? Plenty of air coming out. Check this one. Blows the dirt out. That one's okay. That one's okay. That one's good. So I'll go through and check all the rest of them for blockage. And uh, I'll go up to the shop and we'll start fixing some stuff. The blower is blowing like it should. Everything sounds okay. So I think we're good other than some bearings to change, a couple uh, springs for the 
farming uh, seed farmers and I think we're good to go. Well, I'm going to start uh, rebuilding these closing wheels, the ones that I have locked up. I've got plenty of uh, bearings from Shoops uh, for all my closing wheels and all my disc openers. This is just some of them for the disc openers. I went ahead and ordered enough bearings to rebuild this planter at least once this spring, so I'm not trying to find bearings here and there and everywhere. So um, I do have a few of these. They have the brackets on them that I carry in my truck that are already fully rebuilt because sometimes you have to heat the bracket to get this bearing drove out. And since I don't carry a torch on the truck yet, it's just easier to carry them made up and you just take three bolts out, swap it out on the arm, put it back on, and away you go. So we're going to get this bearing replaced. I'll grab the impact and uh, go ahead and get these out. Too many adapters. So yeah, we got this uh, three-quarter drive uh, Milwaukee Impact I wanted to try out. So definitely works good to break them loose. That's for sure. Works real nice. Now we got all the bolts out. We'll take the bearing here out. I'll go ahead and take this out of the vise, get it out of the way for now. Get the bearing drove out. Wipe the crap out of here. Just dirt and water. A new Put the halves back together. I like to just tap them back together like so. Mom and Dad argue about the lawnmower. I'll go ahead and get these uh, tightened back up. So, <clears throat> the Milwaukee Impact that you've seen a little bit ago, I kind of done that just as a joke. Um, that finally came uh, part of our Bex Rewards points for buying so much seed through them. Uh, we finally got our impact. Uh, for those of you that have been following the channel, you know I've been waiting on a new T870 Bobcat. The T870 was supposed to be here last October, but because of the chip shortage that is going on, it hasn't made it yet. So they did confirm that we should have it sometime in July. So hopefully we'll get that. Whoops, wrong way. Hopefully we'll get that T870 here soon really want to try it out my question is is it going to be a 2022 or is it going to be still a 2021 so we'll see we'll see what the serial number is and the, the year is because we would have lost depreciation on it if it's a 2021 It's a good thing we didn't sell our old T300 because we'd be in pretty bad shape if we would have sold the T300 thinking we were going to get the T870 real quick. So uh, it is on its way. It's just taking a little more time than usual, I guess. But we did finally get the impact. So I was happy about getting that. It came with the load of seed yesterday. Okay, I anti-seize that so it won't get stuck again. So now I'll go throw it back on the planter. Now that we have all of our closing wheel bearings changed out, we're going to start on these seed farmers. So as you can see, the spring broke on that one, so we have to replace it. Don't mind mom in the background mowing. Uh, you can probably hear the lawnmower. If she would just, when she backs up, 
if you just hold the the uh, deck switch up, it keeps the mower from or the deck from shutting off. So if you got John Deere mower and when you back up, the mower deck shuts off. Just take your fingers and hold up on the uh, switch for the deck, and it won't do that. Um, she's been doing that all afternoon. It's been driving me crazy. Uh, she'll just hit the pedal and go backwards and shuts the mower deck off. So anyways, in order to get to this spring, what we need to do, we need to take this handle off because we're going to have to drop that gauge wheel out. So I've already went through and loosened everything. Take the hitch pin clip out that holds the pin in. Then you come down here and you got this carriage bolt. You got to take it out. There's a little pipe spacer if you don't want to drop, especially if you're out in the grass or something. Then all you do, lift this up a little bit pressure off your pin. Drop that in the grass too or wherever you're working. Then you just lower that out. Throw it off to the side. And now you can get into your spring to change for your uh, seed farmer. It's pretty easy to get to them. Um, the reason I'm not doing this in the shop is because even folded this air seeder is too wide to go through a 20 foot door. So if you buy a 30 foot air seeder like this one Remember, it will not fit through a 20-foot door because when it is folded, it's still a little too wide because of the row units hanging out. Sadly, these Henniker air seeders are getting to be a thing of the past. There's a lot of them out there, but a lot of dealers aren't carrying parts for them like they used to. I mean, even Shoops, there's only like four items available in the Shoops catalog now for these air seeders. It's kind of sad. But uh, a lot of guys are going to the big pull type air seeders and not really using the three point hitch ones as much. I love it because in soft ground, I can pick it up a little bit, carry it on the tractor a little more. And there's really no drag other than the two tires on the cart. So if you only put, you know, a couple hundred pounds of seed in a cart, you can get over some pretty soft ground with it. So these springs, you just buzz out these two bolts. 7 16th socket. Pretty simple. There's just a bar that they thread into. Take it off. Set that there. Oop. Oh, that's a smaller socket. So there are rights and lefts to these springs. So I had to make sure I had the right one. When you get, oh, I need to get a new, uh, new ring for this impact. It, it broke, fell off. Oh, one socket. Go ahead and buzz that screw out. plastic. Throw that on the ground so somebody runs it over and hacks a tire on it. Put your screw back in. Get your piece of metal situated back in there. Tighten her back up. And uh, put it back on the planter. Okay, we're going to put the seed firmer back on. Now, there are rights and lefts to these springs, so you have to determine if it's a right or a left. Okay, confusing sometimes. Impact. Tighten 
her up. Okay, ready to put it all back together now. So, the rest of it, just reverse the process and put it back together. Well, I got all the bearings changed, all the springs changed, so uh, the planter is ready to go. There's one more thing I wanted to do to it before I uh, fold it back up and bring the 4640 close to the shop to put my steps on. I got one of them sets of uh, aftermarket steps for it. They're supposed to make it easier to get in the cab because I'm not getting any younger, and them steps are sometimes a little tough to get up and get in the cab. So uh, what I want to do is the end of this tube used to have a cover over it. Well, the cover, the bolts fell out and went missing, and there's a chunk of concrete in there that helps add down pressure to the toolbar so that the row units will, uh, will do their job. And without that cover on there, that chunk of concrete could potentially slide out. It never has, but uh, I don't want to chance it. So what I'm going to do is just uh, drill these holes bigger to 3 eighths and uh, put these bolts all the way through. And then that'll keep that chunk of concrete from sliding out of the tube. So I've got a heart brushless drill now. I actually bought this with an impact driver because I needed the impact driver to use the uh, speed binders that I bought for... Uh, uh, chain and stuff down the low boy and uh, it was cheaper to buy the impact driver and the drill together and I thought well never hurts to have an extra drill so I'm gonna carry this one in my truck I haven't tried I've only tried this a little bit so let's try it on drilling these holes be a good drill. All the other heart tools that I carry in my truck have been holding up really well. I've been really happy with their performance. These bolts are a little long but they're all I have so I'm just going to put them in and I'll just take a grinder with a cutoff wheel and uh, nip them off. I uh, went to Napa and uh, they had a nice gear wrench set with uh, metric and standard wrenches and you got three ratchets with it for $193. So I bought them for myself for Mother's Day. This drill's got that safety in it, so if it gets caught, you don't twist your wrist so hard. Dad's putting a corn planter back in the shop right now. Got to get the spiked closing wheels put on it. And uh, a few other things. Whoops. And then it's ready to go. I also bought him a set of the uh, steps for his uh, birthday because his birthday is May 10th. So I thought, well, I'll get him a set of steps and I'll get myself a set of steps. So uh, we're going to put them on his tractor and my planter tractor. Okay, so I'm going to get this folded up, get it up shop, and get the steps put on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start a whole nother video for putting these steps on because we opened up the box on these steps and uh, there are no instructions whatsoever that came with them. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start a complete another video, show you how to put these steps on so if you buy these steps, you'll know what to do. Plus, we are adding a brace to them because they, by design, they're a pretty good design but they're a little bit flimsy. But the rest of them, the rest of the steps is a pretty good kit. So uh, by adding this brace that we're gonna put in, it's gonna make them a whole lot better. It's not gonna take much to do the brace. So we'll show you that in the video. 
So uh, this will be a whole separate video, so be watching for the step video if you're curious what it's about. Um, but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and end this. The planter is ready to go. All it needs is soybeans put in it, and we're ready to go plant. So anyways, thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it. We'll see you all in the next one. So uh, we're going to lay some pipe tomorrow, which is Monday and Tuesday. And then the rest of the week, we're going to switch over and we're going to start planting. So uh, planting is coming real soon. So thank you for watching. We'll see you all in the next one.